The twin brothers famously lost out to Mark Zuckerberg in a battle for the fortune generated by Facebook. But they did walk away with millions of dollars, and where they put that money is a story of its own. It's detailed in the new book, Bitcoin Billionaires, by author Ben Mesrick, who also wrote The Accidental Billionaires, the book on which the social network was based. Ben Mesrick, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Another Happy fascinating here. subject here. You write about, about the Winklevoss twins, that uh, they were a book cover that had already been judged and judged again. What was the perception of them after yeah. Facebook? So it, it was really my fault, actually. <laughs> when I first met the Winklevoss twins, I grew up on 80s movies, and they were the immediately the bad guys, right. you know? They looked like the guys in skeleton costumes chasing the karate kid around the gym. <laughs> and, uh, and when I wrote Accidental Billionaires, you know, they were the alpha males. They were these, you know, almost a joke. And yeah. I think that carried afterwards. Everyone saw Zuckerberg as the lovable nerd yeah. and them as the bad guys. Um, but that was actually wrong. I love the plural, the winkle The winkle vibe. Yeah, winkle you sort of vibe. coined yeah. that. But I mean, the whole notion <laughs> of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I yeah, mean, right. the idea that they caught on to this on yeah. vacation. Right. They went to, what happened was they got this settlement for $65 million, mm -hmm. which they took in stock. So it became $500 million. Wow. Then they tried to invest in Silicon Valley, but no one would take their money because they were the guys Zuckerberg hates the most. So no one wanted them on their spreadsheet. And so yeah, no one wanted to upset yeah. Zuckerberg. Right. So they went to Ibiza, as one does, and they <laughs> were on the beach. And someone walked up and said, have you heard of Bitcoin? Right. And uh, that started this crazy journey into this digital currency and, and turn them into multi-billionaires. And, and on that journey, we sort of see that there are differing thoughts about what people believe Bitcoin should be. Right. Yeah. What are some of those? Right. Well, Bitcoin started from this libertarian anarchist place where people used it to buy drugs on something called Silk Road. Yeah. People thought it's a way to bring down governments, bring yeah. down banks. Right. But the Winklevoss twins are the guys in suits. They wore suits to class. They're the ones thinking that Bitcoin can actually be a part of the financial system. It's digital money, money I can send directly to you yep. with nobody in between. And that, to them, is a freeing, liberating thing that everyone could use. And help get them back in with the people in Silicon Valley that shunned them earlier. Well, what's crazy is now Facebook is looking at doing a digital coin or a crypto coin, and supposedly, uh, it's been reported, and it's actually partly in my book, that uh, that Zuckerberg has now been talking to the Winklevoss twins. Wow. <laughs> so they're back together again. I mean, Time uh, heals all wounds, I, know. I guess. The world does come. That's going to work out. But I believe it's always been personal between the twins and Zuckerberg, that they're both driven by this personal battle going on, yeah. this Shakespearean battle between the twins and Zuckerberg, and it's never going to end. There's another fascinating character in the book, uh, Charlie Shrem. Uh, he was profiled on 60 Minutes, actually, last Sunday. W what does he represent in the world of Bitcoin? Yeah, so Charlie Shrem was this very smart young guy. He was 19 years old, lived in his mother's basement, and he was one of the first people into Bitcoin. He built a company called BitInstant, but he went the wrong way. He was sort of dragged into the libertarian anarchist fold and ended up making mistakes, ended up being the first person to go to jail for Bitcoin. He was the third partner of the Winklevoss twins, so it's a big part of the story. Yeah. They were trying to bring him to the right side, <laughs> and other yeah. people were pulling him the other direction. To the dark side. Yeah. Right. Well, there have been a few transformational events in yeah. Bitcoin. Talk to us about Silk Road and some Yeah, so originally, Silk Road was the only place you could really use Bitcoin. Silk Road was an underground, dark web site where you could buy and sell anything. I mean, drugs and guns and all sorts of illegal stuff. Um, and in the beginning, that's what Bitcoin was all about. Now, that was taken down in a big FBI raid. The guy who founded it ended up going to jail for multiple life sentences. Um, but the twins always saw that as a good thing. When Silk Road went away, that meant Bitcoin could, could become something mainstream. Mm -hmm. Regular people are not going to use Bitcoin right. if it's being used to buy drugs. Are they still billionaires? Yes, they are billionaires. <laughs> okay, yes. Bitcoin's back up at 8,000. Okay. Right. All right, oh, all right. Well. If, if we I didn't want to retitle it, it right. uh, Bitcoin millionaire, <laughs> Bitcoin thousandaires, <laughs> and Bitcoin hundredaires, and then that would have been sad. This yeah. sounds much better. Ben Metric, yeah. thank you very much. I appreciate it.